Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be painting these puffy winter birds. I really love the color combination of this one and it was so much fun to paint. Before I started to paint, I had a look at pictures to figure out which birds I'd like to include in my composition. I found four pictures which I'm interested in combining so I made a thumbnail sketch to figure out how they're going to be spaced out within the page. This is the first reference image that I chose. I'm just going to take the basic shape of it like a rough silhouette and I'm drawing it out very loosely, not putting a lot of pressure. At this point, I'm just trying to figure out the spacing in relation to the other birds. I think I read somewhere that winter birds kind of puff up their feathers to get warm. So the base shape of these birds are actually quite circular which makes them quite simple to divide up the space. The only concern I have is the direction where their tail would stick out because it might touch the other birds when I'm trying to place them next to each other or it might overlap one another. That's just the main thing that I'm looking out for at this stage of the sketch. So going back to the sketch, this is the second bird that I want to include. And I just tried to sketch on the prominent features of these birds, which are the tail, legs, the beak, as well as the wings. This third one is much simpler. As you can see, it's much more rounded and nothing is sticking out too much. So it's a bit easier to place in relation to the other birds. Since the head is slightly angled on this bird, I decided to draw out where I placed the eyes in case I want to include it into the painting. And then onto the last birds, here I'm going to sketch it the same way. As you can see, the pictures that I've chosen have interesting poses to the birds. They're not just looking straight at you, which makes the composition more dynamic when they're combined together. After I've placed all four birds, I just want to make sure that they're positioned correctly. I had to personally nudge the position of a couple of the birds slightly so they fit a little bit better and also resize them so they fit better with each other. As long as the outline is very light, the lines doesn't have to be super clean. You just want to make sure that the proportion is more or less correct. And the most important thing is the placement of the eyes. Once I'm happy with how everything is positioned, I'm going to use my masking fluid to mask off the eyes so it's much easier to paint later on and I don't have to worry about avoiding that tiny little spot as I paint later on. I'm just going to leave the masking fluid to dry and next I'll go over the colors. Grey of Grey by Holbein John Brilliant Dark by Schminke Burnt Umber by Holbein Yellow Ochre by Roman Schmal Quinn Sienna by Daniel Smith Lamp Black by Daniel Smith, Cobalt Blue by Holbein, and I'll also be using Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martins. Next, here are the brushes that I'll be using. Firstly, this black one has softer bristles, and the tip is not very sharp. I'm going to be using this to paint most of the base color with the wet on wet technique, and I feel like the soft bristles help with making the soft edges. This orange one is a regular round brush, which comes to a very fine tip, and I'm going to be using this to paint some of the details. And of course, this is my Winsor Newton size zero brush, which I'm going to be using to paint the finest and the smallest details. Let's begin to paint. I'm going to start by using this soft bristle brush, and I'm just going to use clean water to wet the body of the bird. I'm going to apply more water at the top, whereas for the body part, I try to use less water, but I'm just trying to distribute it randomly and very lightly. I'm going to use a little bit of grey of grey to just paint this front section of the body. I'm using the reference image to just roughly figure out where I should place this grey, and because I'm painting on a wet surface, it should blend out and soften on its own. While the surface is still damp, I also pick up a little bit of John Brilliant Dark as well as Yellow Ochre to place it on the left under the wings. Next here, I'm using a bit of Burnt Umber and I start to paint the details of the wings. This is still painted on a wet surface, so it's going to look very loose. The key to this painting is to understand how damp you need the paper to be in order for the paint to travel a certain way and that is the main practice here. I would suggest for you to never over dampen the paper, instead use the water lightly because it's easier to control that way. 
On top of the head as well as the bottom of the wings, I use a thicker consistency of burnt umber for a slight change in value. Even if this is not completely accurate to the reference image, I'm only taking the main features of it since this is going to be a loose painting. At the bottom of the beak here, I use lamp black, but because the surface has already dried off, I just use a clean damp brush to soften the edges manually. While using the lamp black, it's better to work with a less damp or even a dry surface because the black is very dark and you don't want it to spread too much and contaminate the other colors. I switched to my pointy round brush here and I use a thin consistency mix of grey of grey with a touch of lamp black to create a light grey color and I use this to paint on a little bit of detail on top of the dry surface to create a furry texture. A little bit goes a long way so I'm going to leave it here and paint on the darker details for the wings. I wet the top part of the wings again but I want it to just be lightly damp so the black doesn't travel too far. If that's uncomfortable for you to do, I would suggest for you to work on a dry surface and use a clean damp brush to soften the blend manually. Here for the bottom of the wings as well as the tail, I'm working on a dry surface and I'm using my smallest brush here and use a thick consistency of lamp black using a dry brush load in order for me to create those finer details. I'm going to switch this up by using a thinner consistency at the top to make the lines look a little bit blurry for those softer feathers. Here I'm going to go back in with a thick consistency of lamp black to just paint over and increase the saturation in the black areas of the face. I'm only placing the black at the center though because I don't want it to cover the nice transition we've created for the base color. And here I'm just glazing very lightly using the Jean Brilliant Dark. Here I'm using a thick consistency of burnt umber with a dry brush load to create a little bit of furry texture on top of the beak. Sometimes even if it's not shown in the reference image, I like to add certain things on just to enhance the shape. For instance, I felt like the head looked flat which is why I added the dark brown texture before to enhance the curvy form of the head. For the feet, I use a thick consistency mix of yellow ochre with burnt umber and I use my small brush here in order to get the really fine lines. And I also smudge the top where it's connected to the body using a clean damp brush. Then I took off the masking fluid and paint on a dark circle inside of the white area and also use bleed proof white to add the highlights to the eyes as well as some added details to the wings and the head. Now moving on to the second bird. I'm going to just wet the surface of the whole body first, very lightly, just like before. Then I'm going to use a mix of yellow ochre, burnt umber with a tiny bit of lamp black. I'm going to use this color in a light consistency to paint the top part of the head as well as the areas of the wings. The paper was actually not damp enough so I'm going to help soften the blend using a clean damp brush, especially towards the back. Then I'm going to add a bit more of the same color, just tapping it in very lightly to create a softer transition. After that, I'm going to use a very very thin consistency of grey of grey mixed with the brown. And when I say very lightly, I mean just like tinted water. And this is also to just wet the belly portion of the bird. Then I'm going to use a thicker consistency of grey of grey and also yellow ochre to place it next to the browns that we've painted earlier. While the surface is still damp, I'm going to use a mix of burnt umber with a touch of lamp black to create a dark brown and I'm going to use it to separate the head as well as the wings. Next for the orange part of the bird, I'm going to use Quinciana. I like how bright this color is but it's not completely orange either, it has a slight brown tint to it and I'm just going to paint it on a wet surface so it creates more of a fuzzy edge. I've made a little bit of a mess on the belly portion and when this happens you can always take off the excess paint using a clean dry brush. Here I'm just going to add a thicker consistency of Quinn Sienna, also a bit more burnt umber to connect the colors together. And while the surface is still wet, I'm just going to bring down the Quinn Sienna a little bit lower. I feel like the paper is too wet to take any more colors, so I'm just going to dry it off completely and work on a dry surface. 
I'm going to increase the saturation of color, so I'm going back to the first Mute to Dark Brown mixture from Burnt Umber, Yellow Ochre, and a little bit of Lamp Black to paint on the head. Then I'm going to use a medium consistency of Quinciana to paint on the dry surface and create a feathery texture. I'm not going to wait for any section to dry, but just to keep adding more paint, here I'm using a thick consistency of grey of grey to add on the colour in between the orange and the brown. Then I went back to the previous dark brown mix, this time with a bit more burnt umber in a thicker consistency to paint a little bit of detail for the wings and the tail. The detail of the wings are quite subtle in the reference image, but I want to exaggerate mine so I use a thicker consistency of lamp black to add on those finer lines. Then I mix in lamp black with the brown that I have on my palette to paint the beak using a thick consistency as well as the feet. Once I'm quite happy with the color, I'm going to take off the masking fluid and just like before, I'm going to use a thick consistency of lamp black to paint a circle inside of the white area. While I wait for the black to dry, I'm going to use a dry brush load using a thick consistency of Quinciana to paint on more of the furry feathers on the belly area. Then I use a thick consistency of bleed proof white to add on the highlights to the eye. After looking at this bird again, I felt like the head and the back of the bird looks kind of flat so I want to puff it up slightly. I just want to make sure everything's completely dried off so I can erase the excess pencil marks. This way I can extend the shape outwards to make it look more puffy. I'm going to use the same dark brown mix and I'm starting with a thin consistency to extend as well as activate the edges of the bird then add on more color while the surface is still damp. Using the same brush, I'm going to use a dry brush load with a dark brown mix and I'm going to just paint on random lines with a dry brush texture to add a bit of detail. Then I also decided to extend the tummy so I'm using a light brush load to activate the edges and then fill in the wet area using Quinciana. Moving along to the third bird, you guys know the drill by now, I want to dampen the area of the body evenly. Then while the surface is still wet, I'm going to mix up a grayish brown color by using grey of grey with burnt umber and a little bit of lamp black. I'm going to carefully place this on the head as well as the back part of the body where the wings are. The neck area or the connecting area between the body and the head should be white and I've accidentally painted over it so I'm just going to take off the excess paint with tissue. For the belly, I used the same color mixture with added grey of grey, a lot of grey of grey, and I'm going to paint this on while the surface is still wet. Then towards the edge of the belly, I want to lighten the color and add a little bit of Jean Brilliant Dark. I'm going to slowly build up the value by adding lamp black into the grey of grey, and I'm going to paint this on the left side of the belly. Now I'm going to build on the detail for the head. I'm going to use that grayish brown mix from earlier and because the surface is now dry, I use a clean damp brush to soften the blend with the rest of the base color. Still using the same color mixture, I'm going to use a medium consistency to add the saturation for the back of the bird. I don't want the bottom of the head or the chin area to be completely white, so I'm going to use a really thin consistency of Jean Brilliant to just give it a little bit of color. Then I load my brush with Lamp Black with the dark brown mix, and I'm using a dry brush consistency to draw on the wings, which will make the lines look very textured and detailed. I'm going to also use this color to paint the face near the eyes as well as the beak, then use grey of grey to continue to the side of the cheeks. I'm going to still stick with this brush and use a medium consistency of lamp black to paint on the tail. I try to do this in single strokes and then I switch to my small brush to use a thicker consistency of lamp black to add on lines for detail. I'm also going to apply the lamp black to the wings. I use a dry brush load to 
to paint the detailed areas. As for the softer colors, I just use a damp brush to soften the colors that I've already placed on that part of the wing. I'm going to continue to paint on the details using a mix of gray of gray with a bit of that dark brown mix and I'm just painting furry textures. As I get towards the edge of the tummy though, I added a little bit of Jean Brilliant Dark. For the beak, I use a thick consistency of lamp black just to paint in the bottom part of the beak and then I'm going to also darken the details of the face. Then I'm just going to add on a bit more detail by flicking my brush very lightly using the brown mix. Then just like the previous birds, I'm going to take off the masking fluid of the eyes and paint on a circle with lamp black, dry it off and add bleed proof white. I decided to paint on top of the wing with a thick consistency lamp black. I'm just going to paint on lines with a dry brush load to create more textures. I want to lighten part of the neck so I decided to use a little bit of bleed proof white here. Then for the leg, I use a mix of yellow ochre with quince sienna. As for the claws, I added burnt umber to darken the color. Then finally, I use a clean damp brush to soften the edge of the leg where it's connected to the body. Finally, moving on to the last bird, I really love the color combination in this one. I'm going to begin by wetting the area of the body. Then I'm going to mix in cobalt blue with gray of gray and a little bit of lamp black to create a grayish blue color and paint it on the head as well as part of the wing on the left. While painting the head, I made sure that the right hand side is slightly lighter so I just kept adding a little bit more color on the left side of the head. For the tail, I'm going to first start by using a thick consistency to line the top. Then I use a clean damp brush to pull some of the colors and just fill in the rest of the tail. Then still using the same color in a really light consistency, I'm going to start building the value on the tummy area. Next, I'm going to start introducing the warmer colors. I'm using a thin consistency of the John Brilliant Dark to paint parts of the face. Then for the tummy as well as the area under the wing, I decided to add Quinciana into the Jean Brilliant Dark and still use a thin consistency to spread it out lightly. At the bottom of the tummy, I added a bit more grey and this is just to separate those two areas for the legs. Now going back to my round brush, I'm going to use a dry brush load with the blue-grey color and paint on a furry texture for the top of the head. Then I took a thick consistency of lamp black to paint it underneath the hairs that I just painted and I'm going to continue this on to the beak underneath. Then I use a clean damp brush to pull the rest of the color so the top part of the beak is lighter than the bottom. You may have noticed that I've made the area of the wings on my painting a bit larger because I want to include a bit more of the bluish color in this composition. So for the wing, I'm just going to make up a little bit of detail by using the same blue-gray mix with added lamp black. And I first use a thin consistency to paint the thicker details. Then once the surface is slightly settled, I use a thicker consistency of lamp black to add finer lines. Here I'm just making up some textures using a mix of Jean Brilliant Dark with Quinciana in a thin consistency. Then I added more Quinciana into the ratio right under the beak for a gradual change in tone. These are just textures I kind of made up in order to accentuate the movement of the bird. For the back of the head, I'm using the same bluish gray mix but this time using a medium load so the lines are not as clear and defined because I still want the detail at the top to pop out where the finer feathers are. I'm going to treat the eye the same way as how I've painted the other birds and this is where I realize I want to darken the top part of the wing so I use the same bluish gray mix with more lamp black in the ratio just to paint over the whole area in a thin to medium consistency so the detail is only at the tip of the wing where I added some dry brush textured lines using bleed proof white. To paint the feet of this bird, I'm going to use the same bluish green mix as well. 
To make them look less flat, I'm going to go over some parts using a slightly darker consistency. Just like the previous bird, I decided to extend the size of the head slightly, so I'm just going to use the same blue-gray mix and layer on a thin consistency until I'm happy with the balance. You can call it finished here, but I felt like adding a tree branch underneath the fourth bird would be a nice addition. I just used whatever brown I had left on my palette, but after painting it on, I realized that the other birds need a place to stand on or else it'll look kind of weird or unfair. So I ended up adding something underneath all of their feet. I just freehand the additional element, but I didn't end up liking them, especially for the first bird where the branch ended up looking a little bit too swirly. But I just went along with it and added additional texture on top using a dark brown mix with a dry brush load to add more texture to the branch. And that's pretty much it for this painting. Despite the last mistake I made, I truly enjoyed painting this one. I'm quite happy with the balance of the looseness and the detail, which is not something that I can often achieve. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!